The patients we have with relapsed refractory myeloma are more challenging to treat. We have a number of new mechanisms of action and we have to be very careful in doing shared decision making as well as effective use of T-cell sparing methods to improve the outcomes of myeloma patients. I am Karthik Ramasamy. I'm a consultant hematologist at Oxford University Hospital and Associate Professor of Hematology at the University of Oxford. Today, we explored the approaches for managing relapsed refractory myeloma patients. What I focused on is as there are a number of therapeutic options available, it is critical now clinicians understand the data, the unmet need to streamline effective therapies for relapsed refractory multiple myeloma patients. So in today's context, we have very effective therapies for newly diagnosed patients. They're called triplets and quadruplets, where you put together CD38 monoclonal antibodies, immunomodulated drugs, proteasome inhibitors, as well as steroids. So what does this mean in real life for patients? We are increasingly having patients who are lenalidomide refractory or datatumumab or isotuximab refractory in the relapse setting. Therefore, we have to look at what the current options we have are. And most of these options are unfortunately not showing very good effectiveness for patients who are lenalidomide and daratumab refractory. So therefore, we're looking at new mechanisms of action in relapsed refractory myeloma. So we have three important options. The first is BCMA targeting. The second is exportin inhibitor. Third is GPRC5D targeting. And there are a number of ways of approaching these three therapeutic options. You could consider a BCMA targeting agent, which is very effective, uses the immune system, then move on to an exporting inhibition, and then go back to another kind of T-cell uh, directed therapy. That is one approach. And today we explored that and the benefits of that. And that would be T-cell sparing uh, in between two very effective T-cell uh, directed therapy. The other approach is if you had a patient who is frail and who would uh, prefer to have lesser risk of infection and would have a more kind of tailored approach to them and they've had very long first remission, you could use an export and inhibition based combination therapy even in the early relapse setting and then move on to other uh, effective therapies downstream if that is required. So the main message for today is the patients we have with relapsed refractory myeloma are more challenging to treat. We have a number of new mechanisms of action and we have to be very careful in doing shared decision making as well as effective use of T-cell sparing methods to improve the outcomes of myeloma patients.